Hi friends, welcome to the NPTEL course on entrepreneurship. I have developed a series of special lectures for you to update the entrepreneurship course to the current status. You will find these special lectures very interesting because they will focus on contemporary themes of startups and also take you through how a startup can develop a startup project. The first lecture in this special lecture series pertains to the Indian unicorn space. We have seen earlier that a unicorn is defined as a startup or a company which has got more than $1 billion in valuation. India has become a hub of unicorns, particularly in 2021. It is also interesting that the startup activity in India has diversified significantly. In this slide, I have given you a few examples of how new entrepreneurial origins in India have taken root and are growing substantially. Some of these names would have been familiar to you, some probably new to you. In the fitness area, we have CultFit and GoQI. CultFit is the fitness coaching uh, and community app, whereas GoQI is a watch which is uh, designed for fitness and also has health coaching along with that. Medtech has seen MFine, 1MG, FormEasy and various other companies. Delivery of course we are all familiar with and to just two of the examples given here Blinkit and Dunzo demonstrate the importance of delivery. Logistics space also has been growing substantially. Delivery, Rivigo are two examples. Delivery has gone through a successful IPO very recently. Agritech has Ninja Cart, Vehicle, Edutech, Vedantu, Anacademy, Fashion, Mensa, which is brand of brands company, Melora, Accessories, Lens Cart, Neemans, Neemans pertains to shoes, Fintech is exemplified by Navi and Lending Cart, Analytics by Fractal and Late Interview. In the area of artificial intelligence, we have Flutura, Naturedyne. In the area of AR and VR, that is augmented reality and virtual reality, we have Jet Synthesis, Avatar Me. Travel has long been there. Redbus exemplifies the startup uh, initiative in travel. Go Ibibo is another successful company. Food has ID and Hunger Box as the examples and social networking, Misho and Udan. These are just a few examples to demonstrate that the startup activity has substantially diversified over the last couple of years. As I said, India has been a hub of unicorns. In 2021 particularly, several startups have entered the unicorn club. As many as 43 Startups have become unicorns, that is, with a billion dollar plus valuation in 2021. And Mensa Brands, headed by the former chief executive of uh, Mantra and also former McKinsey consultant Mr. Anant Narayan, has become the youngest startup to have unicorn status. India also witnessed in 2021 the first health tech, social commerce cryptocurrency exchange and e-pharmacy unicorns in 2021. It is interesting that these Indian startups have raised as much as USD 42 billion across 1,579 deals in 2021. But we must also temper ourselves with the fact that while 2021 was a great year for the startup ecosystem and 2022 has maintained the momentum up to April 2022, we have certain headwinds coming up in the startup space and not only in the startup space but also in the overall industrial and economic environment. Tightening of the global liquidity, inflation driven global economic deceleration and the Russia-Ukraine war, supply chain disruptions and a number of other factors could lead to slowing down of startup funding in 2022 and beyond. So while we are very appreciative of what has happened in terms of unicorn development in 2021 particularly, we must also be cognizant of the risks that could emerge from 2022 onwards. We will cover both these aspects. India's new milestone is 100 unicorns. Out of the 10 unicorns in the world, one 
has been founded in India. That is one out of every 10 unicorns in the world has been founded in India. Some examples. Neo Banking is the latest fintech startup that has achieved a billion dollar valuation and it became the 100th unicorn of India. It just took 11 years for India to reach from one unicorn to 100 unicorns and the graph below shows that particular growth track and the spurt that has happened surprisingly or not surprisingly in the covid era of 2020 and 2021 is extremely important for us that is whatever be the challenge we may face there is that much potential and that much opportunity for the entrepreneurial spirit to tide over those uh, difficulties and emerge strong the combined valuation of indian unicorns is 333 billion dollars and flipkart and baizu's in e-commerce and online education respectively topping the list as we may appreciate the e-commerce sector in india has the most number of unicorns what is again interesting is that india has overtaken the united kingdom in terms of startups that are there and it's india is now home to the third highest number of unicorns after the united states and china the statistics given are as of may 2022 i wanted to expose you to the kind of startups that have entered the unicorn club in 2021 these are a mix of b2b startups and b2c startups or d2c startups these are also a mix of it related startups and also various other domain specific startup for example online stock broking of stocks has emerged as an important unicorn so if you see this list these are the first 15 I have given some of the names would have been familiar form easy me show infra dot market share chat eruditus bharat pay of stocks grow charge b are probably familiar mainly because they are into d2c brands into more visible fintech area or social media area that doesn't mean that the b2b companies are no less important in fact b2b could be a very strong arm of startup development with robust business models driving their establishment as well as growth we'll see the next 15 coin switch kuber has been the first crypto exchange that has been established in india as a startup and it has achieved a valuation of 1.9 billion dollars founded just uh, four years ago urban company has been around for quite some time 2014 onwards and it has emerged as a one-stop shop for home services with a valuation of two billion dollars cult fit i referred to earlier it was called cure fit in the first origins it is a health tech health and fitness company then we have uh, gushup we have got zeta we have got pristine care rebel foods upgrade cardeco droom no broker various types of uh, unicorns or have uh, come into four in 2021 some more here in the area of general insurance for the, probably for the first time we have aqua insurance as a startup i said uh, mind tickle is an enterprise learning platform global bees is a d2c digital brand platform mobiquick again is a payment service provider which has been around from 2009 onwards in fintech we have slice as a lending platform moglix is a b2b e-commerce platform i refer to mensa brands which has been set up only in 2021 become the fastest growing startup and having achieved 1 billion dollars it is looking for expanding its business model growfers long there from 2013 has converted itself into blinkit to focus on the instant delivery aspect of its service Vedantu is another edtech online tutoring, though not on the same scale as Baiju's, has developed itself into a strong franchise. Licious, in terms of offering meats and seafoods, has made its mark in terms of uh, unicorn valuation. It was established in 2015. So we have uh, 43 companies in the startup space which have entered the unicorn club in 2021. Again, this particular graphic is very vivid and uh, visually informative. It tells us the growth of unicorns from 2012 to 2021. In 2012, we had only one unicorn, which is Flipkart. 
in 2013 to we had only one f- additional unicorn that is mu sigma but in 2015 the number slowly grew to 3 and then in 2014 to 4 and during this period some of the big unicorns which you see today such as zomato paytm quicka ola snapdeal inmobi infoage they have come into action space in 2016 we had shop close hike and 2017 renew power in 2018 we have seen swiggy coming in 3 years after zomato made its mark then we have udan by juice freshworks policy bazaar phone pay bill desk revigo oyo etc and as we go forward we will find that the count is too large or too long for us to recite in this special lecture but when you have time please go through each of these companies think of how these brands relate to you in terms of the offerings they have and in terms of the success factors for the company in terms of unicorn development bangalore and mumbai lead the pack mumbai contributes to 30% and it has grown as by, by 3.2x over the last uh, one year Bangalore has always been a leader in unicorn it continues to have 33% of share Gurugram is 16% Delhi 5% Chennai is 5% Pune 2% and others are only 9% interestingly Jaipur saw the first unicorn coming in with uh, Kardeko becoming a unicorn and uh, Kardeko also has become an important uh, platform for uh, not only dissemination of auto related information but also for car exchange let's look at the overall startup scenario as per the economic survey 2021 2022 government of india has recognized over 14000 new startups in 2021 which compares very well 733 startups recognized in 2016 2017 In 2021, 555 districts had at least one new startup, while in 2016-17, only 121 districts had at least one startup. Which means that the startup movement has diversified itself geographically across the states in India. Over the recent years, in terms of the overall startup activity, Delhi has replaced Bangalore as the startup capital of India. for long bangalore held this flag high as the leading startup hub of india but now we have delhi in close competition delhi of course has got gurugram as part of it over 5000 recognized startups were added in delhi while 4514 startups were added in bangalore between april 2019 and december 2021 we must also note that this differs from the previous slide in the previous slide i said that in the unicorn domain we have mumbai and bangalore neck to neck but in the overall domain of all the startups we have delhi with gurugram and bangalore being neck to neck in terms of the overall profile when you look at the sectors you will find that the sectors are uh, many but e-commerce still leads with 21% followed by trading 14% and various other uh, new areas account for 2% 3% etc but two prominent uh, domains of uh, unicorn growth is very much visible one is the edtech space and the second is the fintech space and the third is the health tech space or medtech space these together are contributing 30% to the overall uh, unicorn space by sector as i said we are in the third space the most number of unicorns are in the united states with 587 followed by china 301 and india 100 although we are number 3 in terms of ranking you will also see that we have some uh, strides to take in terms of catching up with us and china in terms of the sheer numbers amongst all fintech is the most highly represented category even uh, globally and they contribute to roughly 1 in 5 unicorns and this is followed by internet software and services 19% e-commerce and dtc 10.4% and artificial intelligence 7.8% this is again an important fact to note globally artificial intelligence has taken roots as we are aware 
but in terms of startup activity us and china are uh, far ahead compared to india in terms of startups that are based on artificial intelligence this is one area where india has lot of potential and therefore must move to capture this potential so to summarize we have a total number of unicorns worldwide as of april 2021 1066 of which number of unicorns in india are 100 and india's global rank is number 3 If you see 21 22 addition we have seen 14000 startups getting added in India and US it takes 6 to 8 years to give birth or to make a startup convert itself to a unicorn status 6 to 8 years of establishment and market performance is all that takes for a startup to become a 1 billion dollar valued company amongst various startups TikTok parent ByteDance is still the world's most highly valued startup. But this kind of unicorn growth has become possible because we have had very aggressive venture capitalist companies which have been willing to invest in India and in the startup space. Venture capital companies are the investing companies which drive ramp up growth, expansion, market capture in the startup space top investors by volume in 2021 year to date in terms of the number of investment are sequoia capital india tiger global axel india bloom ventures matrix partners as per the data which is available sequoia capital leads the table in terms of funding rounds one or two funding rounds and that is followed by tiger global in terms of the value tiger global comes on the top softbank corporation which is famous for putting in large amounts of funds comes second we have three other companies which have got strong investor amounts in the vc space as i said earlier too indian startups cumulatively raised 34 billion dollars of investments in 2021 a 200% increase compared to just 11.2 billion investments from the vcs in 2020 the deal volume also has increased by 28% the number of deals stood at 1009 as compared to 788 roughly 25% increase an interesting fact was getting to be developed in the beginning of 2022 the relatively young unlisted byjus is valued at 21 billion dollars while paytm the payments company was valued at 16 billion dollars zomato was valued at 9.5 billion dollars out of these zomato and paytm got listed now in india the mega blue chips are reliance industries tcs hdfc bank infosys hul who, which have multi decade experience of expansion and diversification and growth in revenues profits and market capitalization but suddenly we see these startups coming into the publicly listed space and getting recognized as companies which could probably represent the new age companies and new platform companies but whether this potential will be fully utilized fully developed whether they will have continued tailwinds as in the recent past or whether they will face new headwinds as we go forward is something which we need to consider in our discussion the current trend is that when you look at the stock market correction that has taken place in 2022 and probably there is more correction that could come our way as we go forward zomato and paytm the new age platforms which were listed have seen their market capitalization shrink zomato lost its market cap from 9.5 to 5.63 whereas paytm had even a sharper decline from 16 to 5 on the other hand the established companies be it uh, hul infosys hdfc bank tcs or the manufacturing oriented companies such as uh, reliance they maintained their uh, market cap more or less which means that a strong robust business model that is established across the breadth and uh, depth of indian uh, economic infrastructure is one of the important aspects of growing market capitalization which also means that the new age companies must focus much more 
on establishing robust business models and serving the customers in India in a sustainable way and not merely capturing the market and ma capturing the market capitalization through only cash deployments. This is a lesson which we will discuss further in the forthcoming slides. Another important thing that has been happening is that of quick commerce and gig workers. According to a Boston Consulting Group study, more than 8 billion Indians are gig workers and this number is going to grow to 24 million by 2023, 20, 24 and 90 million before the end of 2030. Of these, we are able to see the gig workers from food and quick commerce industry because they are the most visible in the public space. But we have to recognize that gig working has spread itself into a number of sectors and people are willing to walk in, do the work and walk out and even churn themselves from one sector to another sector or from one company to another company. Quick commerce in this is emerging as one of the bulwarks of the movement of gig workers. Quick commerce itself is expected to witness 15x growth. These companies unfortunately do not provide either job security or stable income. Hence, it is common for the gig workers to jump from one company to the other whichever pays higher. The companies emerging into the quick commerce sector such as Zomato, Blinkit, Zepto, Swiggy, Instamart have faced criticism by extending this logic of instant delivery far too much. When Zomato offered a delivery within 10 minutes, naturally the company was criticized of a desire to earn attention without really looking at the risks it brings to the delivery boys and the sheer impossibility of achieving this given the kind of transport conditions that exist in India. And these kinds of pressures instead of adding to the presence and enhancing the visibility are also making workers review whether this is the kind of model one should be attached with. Therefore, startup development cannot be one of all numbers and no quality of business or quality of life for the employees. Both are required. And these initiatives are beneficial in terms of providing some competitive edge, but beyond a point they could be counterproductive and even self-destructive. In terms of the market, Clearly, there is a lot of market and it requires certain algorithmic actions to be able to provide the quick commerce service. We need what we call dark stores to be able to provide the quick commerce, which means that a company which is uh, wedded to this concept of quick commerce analyzes the kind of products that are ordered the most and creates or facilitates the creation of dark stores where those products are launched where those products are stored and the moment an order comes the quick delivery company is able to take it from that store and provide the product to the customer. But we have also seen in recent times some of these uh, quick commerce companies had to exit certain cities either because of the worker shortage or the sheer impossibility of running this profitability. So these are the five companies which you can relate to, Zepto, Danzo, Blinkit, Swiggy, Instamart and Zomato in the quick commerce market. This is one specific aspect of startup development that has happened and it also represents one of the, I would say, desperate bits for the delivery companies to retain their edge and try to improve upon the visibility that they already have by offering a new value proposition. As I said, that may not really be a value proposition of the kind which India requires. Another important thing which we need to look at is the ONDC. ONDC is the Open Network for Digital Commerce. As we know, when you have giant e-commerce companies, it is not always possible for the small and medium enterprises to have their voice heard. So the government of India through the DPIIT has created an initiative by which an open network for digital commerce is created. This is expected to curb digital monopolies, support MSMEs to get on online platforms. And this network, which is based on uh, an open platform, will enable local commerce across segments such as mobility, grocery, food order and delivery, hotel booking, travel, 
and many other aspects so these are the transaction movements across different platforms between sellers and consumers that could have if ondc takes off as planned the sellers will have access to more buyers and will have better discoverability of products and because several operational aspects like onboarding discovery and cataloging becomes open source ondc will help broad based the indian e-commerce from the current platform centric model dominated by market leaders such as amazon and flipkart we will have a much broader much wider open marketplace it will also boost hyper local deliveries there are companies which are already working on making these platforms efficient and effective now having done this and having uh, looked at the kind of overall macro situation in terms of the unicorns let us look at some of these startup stories and how the great idea emanated and what has been the journey of different uh, unicorn startups leading first byju's it was founded in 2011 by byju ravindran and divya gokulnath it was a completely offline education model to start with and it became online fully during covid and it has become a decacon as well that is worth 10 billion dollars or more now after covid and also to maintain its uh, differentiation and value proposition it is starting its offline centers as well so as i said the journey started in 2009 because the founder saw that the school applicants were struggling with basic math and science so he started broadcasting his lessons via satellite and later launched the think and learn app over a period of time this journey has given the founders the confidence that online teaching online coaching could be a great educational effort which is uh, having not only national potential but international potential by use uses the latest video formats video lessons and interactive tools to break down complex steps in subjects like math and science and this innovation has made the app stand out and obtain over 100 million users in india in a short span of time it also follows a freemium business model which is a combination of free and premium learning modules this model in fact has become dominant in this internet era even when you look at a newspaper app certain articles are provided free but then you are encouraged to subscribe to the newspaper if you want more articles similarly certain articles are provided which have got great depth not found easily elsewhere and you are encouraged to subscribe so it's a kind of freemium model which has been dominating the internet companies of late and byju has uh, refined this over its journey another startup story is that of swiggy it was founded by shri harsha majesty nandan reddy and rahul jamini in august 2014 so while starting they saw potential in unorganized logistics and they started their first venture called bundle technologies but then while bundle technologies was getting set up the market dynamics changed drastically e-commerce sites like amazon and flipkart started shipping out their products which made the market smaller that is free market for uh, companies such as bundle became smaller therefore they had to shut the business but the concept of delivery was there in their mind and they said this this delivery technology with appropriate networking with restaurants could be a totally different uh, ball game where they could be successful and with ola and uber gaining success through their on app booking they felt that food delivery can be also an on app booking service and the restaurants and the customers can be connected and what happened during the covid times because of uh, shutdown lack of social mobility is very much known to us and food delivery has seen a leg up never before imagined and swiggy and zomato were there and they took most of the growth another important startup story is that of razor pay it was founded by harshil mathur and shashank kumar in 2014 all of us when we go through the Uh, internet payments we will encounter razor pay or uh, phone pay or uh, 
PayU and various other apps. And Razor Pay has been one of the leading companies in this current valuation is uh, $7.5 billion. This is another classic example that just because one idea is rejected, the startup journey doesn't end. The founders had no background in banking or finance, but they realized that the payment solution spaces which are dominated by large companies such as Visa, MasterCard and some banks are not probably suitable for the various kinds of people, various demographic strata that exist in India. And there were no payment gateways for small and medium businesses. So they came up with an idea, but that idea was rejected by over 100 banks. So they decided that why should we go through the traditional routes. They switched their plans to developing an e-commerce site or something similar. But then they found a taker for their technology and they felt that the transaction rate, if you are able to make this payment gateway simple and easy to use by the rank and file in the country, there could be great uh, opportunity. And when they implemented an app for this a payment gateway, they became a market leader over the next two to three years. An academy like Baiju's is in the area of online education and it is one of the largest learning platforms. Over 50,000 registered educators and over 49 million learners. India had got several lakhs of teachers all across the country and they were all limited to the established schools or a few tuitions here and there but the entry of online coaching online education has dramatically changed the way the educators and the learners connect themselves and as you would see in the main lectures rejection is one of the reasons for starting a startup. In this case, Gaurav Munjal, who was in class 11, was rejected by a JE coaching center because they said that he could not be put in a class which had the best teachers. So he decided that democratization of education is an opportunity and a social responsibility. So he came up with an idea by which the best teachers are accessible to every student. The vision of an academy is to empower educators and make this sustainable and keep introducing new products to keep the vision alive. Its valuation currently is $3.4 billion. Misho is a company which was founded by IIT Delhi batchmates Vidit Atre and Sanjeev Banwal in December 2015. It is a social commerce application. What it does is to connect over 13 million entrepreneurs to over 45 million customers across India. They noted that entrepreneurs struggle because they do not have capital. Women entrepreneurs struggle even more. So they decided that they should bring small business online with their own online shop. It's called Mary Shop, also branded as Misho. The team built a tech platform to enable entrepreneurs make, start and provide support in order management, logistics, online payment and marketing. In 2021, the entrepreneurs on Misho grew by 2.5x. The platform now has close to 15 million micro entrepreneurs as of now. Zeroda is another success story. Everybody who has entered the stock market in 2020 and 21 would have come across Zeroda as a highly friendly stockbroking platform which enables easy registration, easy opening of accounts and easy trading based on helpful tips. Nitin was working as a subbroker when his friends and family noticed his flair for trading and he started helping them with money management. And Nikhil who started stock trading dropped out of school to join his brother. So education again as would come from the main course is not necessary, is not absolutely necessary at all to become a startup entrepreneur or set up a startup company. So they conceptualize that we need transparency in the trading world and we have to do away with complicated brokerage structure and we should be very open, easy to grasp 
in terms of the broking fee structure. So they came up with the proposal of flat fee across the transaction size and that's how Zerodha was brought. As I said, the growth of Zerodha also coincided with the unprecedented boom in the Indian stock markets post-COVID and lakhs of young executives and self-employed people joined the stock market's investment frenzy. Current valuation is $2 billion. One of the nice things about Zerodha is that the owners or the founders are not intoxicated by their success. They keep cautioning the markets as well as the investors about the challenges about the perils that could exist in this stock market journey and they periodically call for balance call for equanimity in approaching the stock markets which is a good thing to have in terms of the startup psychology infra.market was founded in 2016 by Savik Sen Gupta and Aditya Sharda both of them are IIM alumni and it's a business to business commerce platform it operates in the infrastructure and construction space so they understood that the manufacturing of many products used in construction industry is dominated by regional players with underutilized capacity. Therefore, they wanted to build a brand by which they could aggregate the demand on one side for the products and bringing together the firms which had idle capacity so that redundant production facilities are eliminated and Efficiency in the infrastructure development is promoted. That's how Infra.Market was born. Now they have 200 retail franchises and is increasing its footprint in the individual home construction and home improvement markets through a new retail vertical. Versa Innovation was founded by Virendra Gupta in 2007. It offers Daily Hunt and Josh. It is an aggregator which provides curated content for users and Josh is a video application that allows users to record and upload videos. Originally, it is for called News Hunt. Daily Hunt then was the next avatar of uh, News Hunt and it was created by ex Nokia employees Umesh Kulkarni and Chandrasekhar Sohani in 2009. At the same time, Virendra Gupta started Verse as a value-added service company, which is an old term referring to mobile services beyond voice calls and fax. Verse was struggling in the new smartphone era and he surmised app stores would become a gold mine and the best way forward was to directly make money from consumers and he was looking for the right platform to launch a transformation. That's when he spotted News Hunt which had just launched an Android application at the end of 2011. He met the founders and acquired the company. This again shows that some of the startups become stronger when they are able to merge appropriate platforms to support a more uh, comprehensive business model. Shared Chat is something which uh, many of us know. It is founded by IIT Kanpur graduates and it is an Indian social media and networking service and its parent company is Mohalla Tech. So they met at a Yahoo hackathon and started their journey with a passion for building products for India. And they num created a number of uh, platforms. One of them is Opinio, a penultimate project, a debating platform. And they created several WhatsApp groups, tested their concept and found that it works. So ShareChat became a robust application that was supported by many people who wanted a kind of different social media and networking experience. Pine Labs is another great company in the fintech space. In 1998, it started with the inception of automated solutions for Indian petroleum sector. Between 1990s and 2004, it was a smart card based payment and loyalty solution only for the petroleum sector. Then they moved from petroleum focused solutions to POS payment solutions and in 2009 its potential was recognized by Sequoia Capital which invested $1 million seed funding in the company. In 2010-11 it enabled affordability solutions for merchants with major issuers and brands and in 2020 Pine Labs joined the Unicorn Club. Currently it is valued at $5 billion. It is another company which is uh, looking at an ambitious listing either in India or abroad. Nika is another uh, success story. It was founded by Falguni Nair in 2012. It is an Indian e-commerce company. Falguni Nair 
before setting up this company had extensive experience in kotak mahindra she was an iim graduate and worked for 18 years in the company she was passionate about makeup and beauty items and she wanted to alter the opinion of indian women on personal grooming and established nike in 2012 what sets nike apart from its competitors is its inventory model in this model products are purchased through brands and distributors after which they are directly sold to the customer it entered the unicorn club in 2020 based on the funding it received from the state view capital nike is touted to be one of the very few profitable startups which has a robust profitable business model its current business valuation is 13 billion dollars pharmis is another success story in the medical uh, diagnostics and pharmaceutical delivery space 10 years ago or 15 years ago nobody would have imagined that the drugs could be sold online in india because the hold over the drug distribution was so much in the established hands in the cndf agents and things like that people never imagined how any prescription based activity could be digitally serviced but then with the growth of internet with the growth of uh, ability of the consumers to upload their prescriptions pharmacy broke the conventional model and created its own digital model and they also dreamt of bringing together patients pharmacies and diagnostic centers onto one platform and they realized that there was a huge gap in india's healthcare system either in terms of affordability or accessibility so in 2015 pharmacy was launched and the company entered the unicorn club in april 2021 it also came up with very interesting and attractive positioning ads and uh, captured the imagination and the brand recall for pharmacy was therefore very high oyo rooms of course is a well known uh, startup story it was founded by ritesh agarwal he was a college dropout but it has now the largest hotel and hospitality chains in the world with operations in over 800 cities across 80 countries again an opportunity that came out from the discovery of one's own problem since ritesh used to travel a lot he used to stay in different hotels and he also therefore recognized the poor hospitality facilities and lack of standardization in the hospitality business so he wanted to create an accommodation system where people could get the best rooms food staff and other service in budget and nora well stays came into 2011 as an aggregator of breakfast and bed stays inspired by airbnb's model and that got relaunched as oyo hotels and homes in 2013 covid has given definitely a big shock to the hotel and hospitality industry but oyo rooms stood strong and they are contemplating a public issue when the current market uh, volatility subsides otherwise they would have come in with a public issue even earlier Paytm has become the brand ambassador for digital payment space. It was founded by Vijay Shekhar Sharma in 2020. It has emerged as a top fintech company and despite the competition from brands like Free Charge, Paytm was successful in projecting itself as the largest payments company and the users base grew from 125 million to 185 million and demonetization definitely gave a leg up to Paytm in terms of its ready availability as a fintech platform and you can also surmise that Paytm was a company which was instrumental in connecting the formal and informal economy it was not unusual in the covid times to see even coconut vendors or street vendors having Paytm board as part of their uh, overall positioning of their goods Vijay Shekhar Sharma began the entrepreneurial venture in 1997 starting with indiasite.net as a website the company was sold the money that was raised was used to establish 197 communications which is the parent company of Paytm it continues to be headed by him there was of course some kind of uh, controversy on the startup journey 
people felt that paytm was diversifying far too much in terms of paytm mall something else and something else and whether this was the appropriate way to lend focus and depth to the startup activity was a question that was being raised cred is another uh, startup story it was established in 2018 with the sole aim to make a credit card bill payment simple and a philosophy graduate and an mba dropout set out this entrepreneurial journey with a vision to reward people who pay back bills on time so faisa back became this company later and uh, this again is a unicorn with a 4 billion dollar valuation Droom was started by Sandeep Agarwal in 2014 and he became the only entrepreneur who founded two unicorns in a row in the last 10 years. The first was Shopclose in 2011 and then technology and data science driven company Droom. It is the largest online market space for buying and selling pre-owned automobiles. In this case, Sandeep Agarwal had a significant experience of being an analyst in Wall Street. and he decided to launch a research coverage on make by trip and he came to india in 2010 then he realized that internet commerce was just beginning to take off in india so he started shop close and he left his 1 million dollar job at wall street and decided to focus on startup development he again wanted to have something which is in the consumer internet technology space and therefore he started the online automobile space and he also understood that the automobile industry is set for a huge market revolution in india and it requires something of the nature of droom for that mensa brands was founded by anant narayan in 2021 it went on to become unicorn within 6 months of its inception it has built global digital first brands by partnering with the right founders and helping them scale up their business by taking brands global and driving their d2c sales he felt that india would be moving sooner than later from an unbranded marketplace to a branded marketplace and he gave a period of 10 years for this journey to happen and he thought that he, india is at the cusp of a brand revolution therefore he started mensa brands to take the next tech savvy digital first brands from india to world level and it's catching on the d2c tailwinds and it has uh, the thesis of thrasio thesis with to support it it aims to acquire mid sized digital first brands in this space that make anywhere between 10 crore and 200 crore rupees in annual revenues and build on their growth current valuation is 1 billion dollar but expectations are that it would maintain a rapid growth mpl was founded by sai srinivas kiran and shubham malhotra in september 2018 and their journey was in terms of gaming industry they tested their idea for paid entry gaming context by organizing sessions and they used their cooks as their initial customers but later the word spread and mpl grew to become the second gaming unicorn within 3 years of its inception the biggest beneficiaries as we know of lockdowns and stay at home restrictions were the online gaming companies companies invested more in gaming in 2020 than in the previous 5 years mpl tripled its user base and revenue during the 2020 lockdown period and is now home to 80 million users Eruditus is another uh, language online company founded by Ashwin a chartered accountant he started an online travel company in 2005 but sold it in 2019 and he wanted to start something in the education sector because education he felt would benefit people not merely in terms of uh, his business but in terms of learning that it imparts to the people so the company offers today courses across 80 countries in multiple languages it receives 33% of the revenue from us 20% from india and the rest from latam south east asia eu and china this demonstrates how indian educating talent can spread itself across the world and create a network of teachers and students interlinked more than 250 courses are offered in eruditus and the company has grown from earning a revenue of 66 million dollars to 
175 million dollars while talking about these online uh, education programs we should also pride ourselves that nptel is the world's largest repository of online education what we do in terms of nptel is actually gigantic and what we do is simply highly diversified and highly in depth because this program is supported by seven iits and in indian institute of science there is so much depth in the professorial talent and there is so much passion in the nptel system to provide iit class teaching iit class learning to everybody whoever is interested in learning through online education so in terms of the capabilities in terms of the infrastructure and in terms of the potential valuation not necessarily in terms of the market cap because this is a enterprise uh, that is founded and run by the government it is not a publicly listed company but the kind of value that the nptel platform is creating is simply unparalleled globally so online education has got great potential and we should be proud that the government of india ministry of human resources development and the seven iits including iit madras and institute of science are passionately supporting this endeavor and uh, many students like you hundreds and thousands of students like you are taking several courses in fact the enrollments exceed uh, several thousands and uh, people take the exams gain the certification and uh, the courses are offered with a regular cadence so it is something which we all need to be proud of as indians then we have uh, unifor a startup story it was incubated out of the indian institute of technology and the focus was on ai tools specifically on contact centers or call centers and the p- company was pitched in t- 2017 mit event in new delhi and none other than john chambers former executive chairman and ceo of cisco systems heard this story he he got inspired and acquired a 10% stake in new for at 30 million dollar valuation now the company is on track to meet its goal to reach 100 million dollars in annual recurring revenue by the end of the fiscal year 2022 darwin box is another different story back in 2014 when jayant was working for a corporate consulting firm he realized that the management was not aware of the hr metrics so this got into a discussion in terms of the hr software and they started a cloud based end to end hrms platform which serves several enterprise clients established companies such as uh, dr reddys as well as new age companies such as paytm delivery nivea swiggy etc are also part of this the company is now aiming to double down on global expansion and accelerate its product development plans after having grown 200% in the last one year deal share is another interesting story it started as an e-commerce platform on whatsapp and it offered hundreds of products to consumers it offers local brands and has its own ecosystem of in-house private labels to make its offerings affordable to customers because the social commerce market would grow substantially deal share has got significant potential that lies ahead moglix was founded in 2015 by iit kanpur and isb alumni and the idea is to help over 500000 small and medium sized businesses and some 3000 manufacturing plants across india singapore uk and ua in their procurement for industrial goods it is a b2b commerce unicorn and this is the first b2b commerce unicorn which has achieved a 1 billion dollar valuation in the manufacturing sector and moglix played a critical role during the covid 19 times when social mobility was uh, affected but economic mobility was very much required but having seen so many unicorn models having seen the success of unicorns we should also be little introspective and little reflective we are seeing that there is a slow down in the investments there is also a kind of continued loss making that is occurring in this startup space the reasons are buying market share market presence through cash deployment 
if at all excessive cash deployment including discounts and hyper competition therefore there would be an increasing customer acquisition cost which leads to poor profit visibility and this has also been underlined by the fact that many of the consumer tech unicorns that went into ipo recently have had uh, write downs in their listings the investors also will be much choosier in 2022 after the frenzied investment activity in 2021 mega investors such as softbank and the vision fund have seen the valuations of their portfolio companies plummet so until the next liquidity boom comes i think it is going to be a tight rope walk for the startups to gain market share vis-a-vis -vis gain appropriate funding important thing which we must note is that the metrics that are the gold standard for traditional companies such as revenue growth with profit after tax and ebitda as the real markers are not generally followed by startups instead cost of goods sold gross merchandise value and active user counts are the valuation metrics that are commonly used and these are not reflective of the profit potential of the business or the actual profit of the business so as long as the vcs are able to provide funding these may not be a concern but the moment vcs tighten their own purse strings the startups also will need to tighten their belts while there will continue to be disruptive startups continue to be new tech ipo offerings and there will continue to be interest in the indian startup scenario we also have to prepare ourselves for a more rigorous and more balanced way of growing startups in india so when you look at these 100 unicorns we will find that only 23 are profitable and the profitable startups are these out of which not many are noticed in terms of the general uh, look feel we get about the startups some are specialized startups as i said nika is one of the very important uh, profitable startups zeroda is another profitable startup lenskart is a profitable startup infradot market is a profitable startup so you can see that the revenue levels of these uh, companies varies substantially just as the market valuation also moves substantially all of these things which are uh, top profitable companies are also unicorns with valuations ranging from 1 billion dollar to 13 billion dollar but when you look at the revenue profiles you will find that the revenues in some cases are as small as 167 crores and in some cases they are a bit larger at 1748 crores or something like that so the revenue basis when you look at the traditional uh, mid cap large cap benchmarks in india the revenues are very small the profit levels are smaller but the market valuations are much much higher which means that there is a delicate balance which could be disrupted by the current macroeconomic environment and which must be protected by prudent managerial practices that we need to have but still there is this trend even a company such as tata 1 mg which has got a traditional behemoth that like tata with them has chosen to provide very aggressive pricing we may call it uh, promotional pricing for the diagnostic tests tests which are as complex as thyroid test liver function test lipid profile test diabetes are offered at a uniform low price of 100 rupees compared to what exists in the market ranging from 550 rupees to 1300 rupees and this price was announced as recently as in may 2022 so when you have rising competition and when you have hyper competition in pricing you can have only lower pricing power but when you have pricing which is determined by the cash you have will by the cash you are willing to support to capture market share then the price pressure is going to be disruptive we have seen that happening in the telecom industry when the new entrants such as jio came up with very aggressive low cost plans and that disrupted the financial stability of the entire industry while jio has uh, garnered 33% market share or so in uh, no time as a result of the very aggressive entry strategy it also remains uh, 
proven that the industry's capability in the overall got uh, disrupted because of such a strategy so hyper competition to capture market share by startups may be one of these strategies but should never be this whole strategy and sh- that should not be pursued recklessly without an understanding or respect for the overall industry strategy and overall industry structure so, so many of the startup companies particularly the new age ones have decided to test their mettle in the indian stock markets it also provided an opportunity for some of the founders to exit partially make money and also for the vc investors to exit partially or fully and make money so nazara technologies a gaming company zomato delivery company card red online auto classified freshworks saas solutions nike fashion policy bazaar insurance aggregator PTM, FinTech, MapMyIndia, IoT, EaseMyTrip, Travel Technology, Fino Payments, RateGain, they all came up with their IPOs and some of them have been very successful. Some were listed much above the offer price in the stock markets and unfortunately they also hit 52 week low soon after when there was turmoil in the stock markets. if you see the startup ipo of performance from may 9th to may 15 2022 there are companies which posted uh, modest gains only 12% gain 16% gain like that but most companies have posted significant losses during this period when the statistics were taken if you look at the 52 week high 52 week low current price ipo price you will find that the current price over the ipop price has resulted in these kinds of losses in respect of several companies so what does it prove it proves that eventually the business model and the profitability of operations is the one which will assure investors of long term health and long term sustainability of the business so while there could be a lot of market froth excitement and interest in the new age technology firms when the chips are down the traditional metrics are the ones which will be respected and which will be rewarded by the investors so you can see the underperformance of new age tech firms how they moved down and the move down has been uh, secular and faster those which inspired very high levels of excitement such as zomato 197 communication pb infotech quadrat tech fsn e-commerce and fino payments have seen a sharp decline in the prices in on the stock market and that hits the retail investors as well and if the retail investors get these kinds of shocks the interest in supporting the new age firms or even the larger uh, community of firms in on the stock markets will get reduced and that is not good for the indian stock market the situation therefore a sound business model is the essential requirement for the startup movement in india to be sustainable and to be growth oriented with the adverse changes in the macroeconomic environment investors have begun to turn cautious they have started advising the founders to trim costs and improve profitability sequoia an aggressive investor in indian unicorns has sent an advisory a 52 page advisory to the founders of startups to eschew their much preferred stance of growth at all costs buying market and market share without a profitable business model is no longer approved or appreciated by the vcs in today's environment we know what is today's environment comprise of macro uncertainties are many for us tighter liquidity with the withdrawal of uh, liquidity and quantitative t- tightening by various central banks including the reserve bank of india high inflation in various countries across the world in the united kingdom we have an inflation rate which is as high as 15% India also has uh, recorded very high inflation rate as a result the Reserve Bank of India had to come up with a sudden rate increase of 40 basis points in the repo rate and Fed is committed to do whatever it takes to reduce the inflation so and that leads to rising interest rates the Russia Ukraine war is another sad story which has affected uh, availability of food grains disrupted the supply chains 
and has caused much difficulty in terms of shooting up of crude prices metal prices and also dislocations in production infrastructure across the world so the startup advisory today by wise investors to founders are the following a focus on cash and cash flow which means that you should have a profitable business model to price your products and services to earn the most which consumers are able to give and which the products and services deserve that is never deep discount your products and services three improve unit economics that is you don't do mindless expansion without understanding what it takes to have an economical product service or economical product manufacture the fourth one cut expenses and focus on profitability cut expenses doesn't mean choking yourself it means that you avoid wasteful discretionary expenditure and in the event you are in a situation where you need cash to tide over the current situations please do raise equity or debt if needed even if the such raising is expensive and even if you don't get it high valuations as you used to get a few months ago and overall using these kinds of approaches creates multiple financial degrees of freedom so that you can ensure that your business is on an even keel and even if the environment particularly the macroeconomic environment becomes more challenging you are able to coast through this period successfully and i think this is a lesson which is not at fully driven down into the psyche of various startups and various founders but as learners as uh, people who are interested in the indian startup movements and its uh, robustness i think you should uh, absorb these uh, guidance factors and appreciate startup movement as also one of running successful sustainable business models thank you we will meet again next week with another special lecture